Uh, let's talk a little bit about Iran. Uh, that is getting a lot of attention out on the uh, on the campaign trail. Uh, Mitt Romney says we cannot tolerate a nuclear Iran. Ron Paul at the other end says uh, we just need to be nicer to them. Uh, we have put these big sanctions into place, uh, and now the price of oil has shot up to over $100 a barrel again. Uh, it's pretty clear that we in the West are going to pay a price ourselves for having to impose these sanctions. Do you have any indication that that's beginning to work, that that's causing the Iranians to back off this idea of producing uh, a nuclear weapon, if in fact, do you think that's what they're trying to do? I, th I think the, the international strategy here, and this really has been an international strategy to apply sanctions, to apply diplomatic pressure on them, to try to convince Iran that uh, if, if, you know, if they want to do what's right, they need to join uh, the international family of nations and act in a responsible way. I think the pressure of the sanctions, I think the pressure of, of diplomatic pressures from everywhere, Europe, the United States, elsewhere, uh, is working to put pressure on them, to make them understand that they cannot continue to do what they're doing. Uh, are they uh, trying to develop a nuclear weapon? Uh, no, but we know that they're trying to develop a nuclear capability. And that's what concerns us. And our red line to Iran is do not develop a nuclear weapon. That's a red line for us. Rick Santorum says we should already be making it known to them and the rest of the world that we're planning an attack to take out their nuclear facilities uh, and that we should let them know about that right now. Uh, what about a military reaction right now? Well, you don't take any option off the table. I think that's extremely important. Don't take any option off the table. But the responsible thing to do right now is to keep putting diplomatic and economic pressure on them to force them to do the right thing and to make sure that they do not make the decision to proceed with the development of a nuclear weapon. General, how hard would it be to take out their uh, nuclear capability if, in fact, we decided to do that? This is not just going in there and dropping one bomb on one building. Well, I, I'd rather not discuss the degree of difficulty and in any way encourage them to, uh, to, to read anything into that. But, but I will say that uh, our, my responsibility is to, is to encourage the right degree of planning, uh, to understand the risks associated uh, with any kind of military option, uh, in some cases to position assets to provide those options on, in a timely fashion. And all those activities are going on. Could we, if we had to, without using nuclear weapons ourselves, take out their, their nuclear capability? Well, I certainly want them to believe that that's the case. Well, is it? <laughs> I absolutely want them to believe that that's the case. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, would you like to add anything to that? I, I think uh, they need to know that... Uh, that if they take that step, uh, that they're going to get stopped. What about if they decide to uh, block us off at the Straits of Hormuz? We've made very clear that uh, the United States will not tolerate the blocking of the Straits of Hormuz. That's another red line for us, and that we will respond to that. And we would be able to, could they actually, General, do they have the capability to actually block off that, that uh, waterway, which is, of course, where all the oil to get it out of that part of the world. Comes they, they've invested in uh, capabilities that, that could, uh, in fact, for a period of time, block the Straits of Hormuz. We've invested in capabilities to ensure that if that happens, we can uh, defeat that. And so to, the simple answer is yes, they can block it. Um, of course, that is as well, a, uh, we've, we've described that as an intolerable act. And it's not just intoler intolerable for us, it's intolerable to the world. But we would take action and, and reopen the straits. A lot of people, Mr. Secretary, say we ought to just tell the Israelis quietly, look, if you need to take out that nuclear uh, capability in Iran, go ahead. Uh, that'll be fine with us. Uh, what would happen if Israel does decide to take this matter into its own hands? And what would be our reaction and response to that? I think, I, you know, our preference is that the, the international community, including Israel, ought to work together on this issue. Uh, we, face, we, we have common cause here. Uh, we're not interested in them developing a nuclear weapon. We are not interested in them uh, proliferating uh, violence throughout that uh, region. We are not interested in them uh, trying to assist in terrorism. 
We are not interested in them trying to destabilize governments uh, in that region or any place else. We have common cause here, and the better approach is for us to work together and not act But what if the Israelis did that? If the, if the, the Israelis uh, made that decision, we would have to be prepared to uh, protect our forces in that situation, and that's what we'd be concerned about. Let me uh, ask you about Iraq. Uh, we still have 15,000, 17,000 civilians there, as I understand yes. it. Uh, are you confident that they're safe? We're confident that we, we have an Iraqi government and an Iraqi security force that uh, is capable of dealing with the security threats that are there now. Uh, the level of violence has been down. It's been down for a long time. And even though we've had these periodic acts of violence, that's something we've experienced there for a long time. But the bottom line is that the Iraqis can provide good security and that our people can be secure in what they're doing. There. But, but I mean, the fact of the matter is we've had over 100 people killed uh, just this week there, have we not, as this, uh, these various attacks no. have come about? And Bob, you're right. Uh, we're going to see those kinds of acts of violence take place. But when you look at the level of violence overall, it is down, uh, and it has been down, mainly because the Iraqis have been able effectively to develop good security, and that's important.